Hey everyone, it's Jamie Slays. Today's video is brought to you by District Kid, and we're going to cover five of my most important tips for heavy metal guitar tones. Now the first thing in the list is guitar pickups. I know, there's loads of varieties of guitar pickups, but we're specifically talking about high gain ones. When you think high gain, you're looking at Bare Knuckle, Legendary Gatekeepers, EMG, Fishman, Seymour Duncan, those kind of things. But when you want high gain metal tone, you want high output pickups. Now I'm not going to go into the details of why high output pickups work, because I don't actually know. It's something to do with the winding. Jason said, something to do with how many times you wind it, the more times you wind it, the higher output it is. Something to do with magnets. I don't know. I don't design pickups, I don't make them, I just play them, and they sound great. But if you want high gain metal tone, those are some of the ones that you should look for. And the next component on the list are guitar picks, plectrums, whatever you want to call them. The way you play is affected by how you hold your pick. It's affected by the material you're using and the sound of it and how it vibrates against the pickup is going to be massively changed by all the stuff that you're holding in your hand. If you use two P piece like Brian May does, it's not going to sound the same as when you use a James Hetfield White Fang, is it? That then neatly segues into the next component which is guitar technique. Now, I know what you're thinking, why can't I just buy a nice guitar? nice pickups and an amp and be done with it. Well, you need to practice. I hate to break it to you, but you have to practice. The way you hold your pick, the way you rest your arm, the way you use your wrist versus your elbow or forearm, all of those things have a huge impact on the way your guitar sounds. One thing that I think might help is playing guitar acoustically. Now, I don't mean play acoustic. I mean play not plugged in without headphones or anything. I grew up playing guitar watching TV with my parents, sitting along, strumming away, and then because I couldn't really hear it, because the TV was on, I would play harder. John Brown from Monuments and Riff Hard talks about how the more attack you have, the more audible it is, the better your tone is, because then you're relying less on the amp and the pickups and more on how you attack it. Try that out, see what you think. I think it really works. The next component, and possibly one of the most important, is the amp that you use. <laughs> Now you're not going to want to play a Fender Classic, but you might want to play PV5150 or 6505, EVH5153 or EVH5150 Iconic, Mesa Dual Rectifier, Triple Rectifier Mark IV, Driftwood Purple Nightmare, both in its mini forms and its big forms. The list goes on. There are other amp companies out there, but they all have one thing in common. They're all tailored toward a high gain metal sound gonna throw this one in as a freebie, the cab as well. I realized recently, if you had one head, 10 different cabs, versus 10 heads and one cab, the 10 cabs would sound completely different than the 10 heads. Speaker placement, speakers, the woods, the mic placement, all that stuff makes a huge difference in your tone. Try it, if you have guitar plugins, change the IRs, change the speakers, and notice how different that one amp tone will sound. DistroKid is an awesome platform for musicians like me to be able to post their own music online, get the music shared to all streaming platforms, giving you 100% of the royalty and be able to share that royalty with anyone else on your team as well. Things I love the most about DistroKid, right? Super easy to use. The team are really helpful whenever you need them. Another great thing is they always keep you up to date with all the streaming platforms that are ready to show off your music. They give you a link to it and also a share page so that you can share it with all your friends on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. I love DistroKid, I've been using it for years now and I've been posting all my music recently to iTunes and Spotify and all the other streaming platforms using DistroKid. And the best thing is, the guys at DistroKid are giving you the chance to get 7% off your annual subscription by using my VIP code www.distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash Jamie Slays. And the final tip I think people tend to overlook is don't use distortion pedals! Well, you can if you want to. Um, I prefer to use boost pedals, tube screamers, plumes, Max and OD, 808s, those kind of things. There's nothing wrong with using distortion pedals. I've got some here, I've got a chug, I've got the triad, 
I've got the BE Friedman OD pedal, which technically is probably a distortion pedal, not an overdrive pedal. They are essentially amps in little boxes. I don't see the point in having a really nice amp and then sticking an amp in a box in front of it. Do it if you want. The HM2 seems to work out pretty well, but I don't see the point personally. I'd use it in an effects loop, I'd use it into an interface, I'd use it you know, into something else and capture it maybe. But I don't see the point in having a really nice amp and a cab and then sticking a pedal in front of it. If you're gonna do that, get a Seymour Duncan Power Stage or an orange pedal baby and just use pedals into a cab. Overdrive pedals, I think, work because they work with the amp and they shape the tone. They help boost mids or they help cut back mids or bass or all those kind of things. Whereas I think an, a distortion pedal is something that I personally did when I was learning. I had a Marshall MG30 DFX and I stuck a Digitech Metal Master in front of it and it sounded horrendous. <laughs> but I had to learn that it sounded horrendous and then it made me want to get a PV5150, which I couldn't afford, so I got a Bugera 6260 and traded that in for a 5150. But the moral of that story is, even with the 5150 and the PV5150 and the 5150 Iconic, I still use a boost pedal because it helps dial it back a bit. I don't have the gain on full all the time, maybe on four or five, put an overdrive in front and it helps just give it that lift, gives it that oomph and it helps cut through the mids and all those kind of things. So yeah, I'm not saying don't use a distortion pedal, but I'm saying maybe avoid it for a bit, try out an overdrive and then see what you think because a distortion pedal sometimes, again, its overall job is to go in front of an amp and just be the distortion. Sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of all those controversial opinions of mine. What did you think? Do you agree with them? Did I miss out any? Do you use distortion pedals in front of clean channels? Are you an amp heretic? Fix loop maybe, but clean channel, not so sure. If you enjoyed it, like the video, because then I know, and then I'll do more videos like this. If you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell because then you'll be notified when I post more videos. Thanks again as always to District here for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you guys next week for some more metal videos. Bye everyone. <laughs>